This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, this is Alex Bennett, and this is The Ramble, back again, again, after a few weeks off. Ladies and gentlemen, in what is considered to be the most oppressed city of the United States, <laughs> I just, it, it's Larry Bubbles Brown, folks. Um, yeah. <laughs> I Why would I live in the most depressed city? It's not good. It, it, it's amazing. It's ama- I watched a little bit of a documentary. I'm going to watch more of it later with uh, Anderson Cooper about San Francisco. and what It's called What Happened to San Francisco. And it's not the city I knew, you know, at no. least in certain parts of it. I mean, even the depressed parts of the city are more depressed than they ever were. So how do you negotiate? Well, how do you negotiate? Yeah, the uh, the tenderloin is just out of control, which was always, uh, if you're not from here, a very kind of a sleazy part of the town. Mm-hmm. And uh, Dave Chappelle was here last week, and this was in the news that uh, he he was having dinner at some restaurant in the tenderloin. Somebody in front of the restaurant took a dump in the street, <laughs> and he he couldn't believe how bad things are here. Yeah, but. Why was he eating in the tenderloin? That's what I was wondering. Yeah, it must have been a really good restaurant. <laughs> I mean, I guess tenderloin is the best kind of beef, but, you know, I mean, <laughs> might have been a steak joint. I don't know. Yeah, well, it's, uh, that area is just like, it's only like two or three blocks from Macy's, so you're... And then, so, let's see, I just heard that 17 stores have left the Union Square area, which I didn't know there were 17 stores there, but... Yeah, well, uh, the reason they're leaving is uh, the theft. Theft, yeah, and they saw it's also dangerous to their employees. Wow. So are they moving those stores elsewhere, or did they just close them down? They just closed them down. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. You know, I remember... you got to get out here and take a look at it before it completely implodes. I remember years ago, I was traveling home one night, and I don't know, I, it was down around, God, I guess in the Tenderloin area. Okay, uh, and because I don't know exactly what the tenderloin area is, but I think I have a good idea of it. Uh, and I, all of a sudden, the traffic was coming to dead halt. And I'm going, come on, it's, it's Saturday night. This is not an area that's a big area for, uh, uh, you know, dining and dancing and things like that. Why is, what, what's the stall for? And then I suddenly noticed. It's where all the hookers were standing out on the street, and all the guys were driving uh-huh. by uh, talking to them. Yeah. And it was just horrendous. But it wasn't, how can I put it? It wasn't seedy. It was just hookers. It didn't seem, it didn't seem dangerous. It didn't seem dangerous, no. I never felt a, a danger there. And I just, you know, I, I, that's the worst I ever saw that part of San Francisco become. Now, granted, where you live, there's no problem, right? I mean, you don't see people sleeping on the streets, do you? Uh, a few now. There's some guy that got uh, savagely beaten uh, uh, last month by a homeless person he'd been sparring with over the past couple of weeks, and that was just uh, that was at Chestnut and uh, Laguna. Yeah. And now you live in Cow Hollow? Yeah. Yeah. That's, I don't know why they ever called it Cow Hollow, but it's Cow Hollow. I think there were cows here 100 years ago, literally. So. And it's, it's north of Chestnut, right? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, what street do you live on? I'm on Chestnut. So. Oh, you're on Chestnut. Okay. Yeah. And what's your address and what's the code to your lock? <laughs> and what's uh, my social? <laughs> what's your social? <laughs> This is the last four numbers I'll do. <laughs> but, I mean, I, I couldn't believe what I was seeing, but, of course, what I was seeing was in the Market Street area, Tenderloin, stuff like that, right? Yeah. And there are guys out there shooting up. 
Oh, broad daylight, shooting up, falling asleep on the sidewalk. So I just assumed it was this bad all over America, but apparently not. What makes San Francisco such a magnet for this? Because obviously it isn't like there's San Francisco's San Franciscans who are down on their luck, okay? It's people who have specifically come to San Francisco to shoot up, I guess, or to be impoverished. I don't understand it. Yeah, they, well, they give you needles, and uh, it's not, uh, I guess they're encouraging it. They're not certainly not stopping it. So well, you have not to, working. It, passing out needles, I have nothing against, because it does solve one big problem, and that's people dying in the streets, okay? Uh, but I just, you know, I mean, it. it uh, I wouldn't, also wouldn't think they would pick San Francisco. If I were them, I would pick Los Angeles, where it's warmer most of the year. In San well, Francisco. L.A. is almost as bad now. Well, San Francisco is not exactly the ideal city for sleeping. Yeah, here you would freeze. Well, you don't freeze. The freezing is living in New York during the winter, okay? You don't, but it gets cold here. Yeah, I mean, I'm when I was growing up, I would go, oh, man, it's freezing outside. I didn't know freezing until I moved to New York, you know. So, I mean, uh, San Francisco is... What can we call it? It's it's damp, okay? It's very moist. damp. It's moist. Yeah, it's the, the fog and so on. It's a, it's a very moist atmosphere. It's a great place to live if you're a mold. <laughs> if you're a mold, <laughs> remember that for your act. Uh, that, oh, yeah. <laughs> that's a great line. If you're a mold, it's it's great. Yeah, right. I'm. Hi, I'm Penicillin. I'm live here. Yeah. Well, let's see. Part of the problem is I think the uh, I think the city gives four or six hundred dollars a month to every homeless person, so they get the cash. So that brings well, some that, of them that, in. That, you know, I I don't disagree with that. On the other hand, I do disagree with it. I I don't disagree with it because the people need some kind of s- substance to feed themselves and so on and so forth but um, we know it's not going to that uh, and I just think that the, you're right that does encourage them uh, yeah. and I think you should do everything to discourage people from sleeping in the street shooting up in the street uh, I, you know I think what it is does the city have the resources these days Because it would seem to me that they've said, okay, on one hand, we could arrest all these people, but then we'd have to have them go to court, and and we're going to have to put them up in jails and so on overnight. That's all going to cost us money, and we can't afford it. Is that the is that the prevailing thought? Well, they're, they're spending. I think they spend a hundred or two hundred million dollars a year on the homeless just for that problem alone. Do you so know? Do you know what we just spent so doing f- anything? You know, we for spent, it, spent so far in all these immigrants that uh, uh, the governor of uh, Florida, governors of Florida and Texas have sent to us four billion dollars. Wow. So, you know, again, we're New York. Four billion is what it takes to take care of the homeless people here and the immigrants that they face them on. Well, I don't know why we just don't sue Texas, you know, why we don't file charges against the governor of Texas for sending those people here in the first place because it's wholesale kidnapping. So, you know, but enough of our problems because we've got some here i don't go out that much so i uh, to me new york is still new york okay but supposedly i mean there people always hear about people getting pushed into the subway by uh by homeless people and uh uh things like that but i don't i don't see new york being that crime ridden not like what they say san francisco is which is drugs it's it's theft, it's all kinds of things. They say that the reason they're leaving Market Street and Union Street is they couldn't keep anything on the shelves. They were all being stolen and nobody was being arrested for stealing it. Yeah, well, they got the new law out here. If you steal something that's worth less than $950, it's not prosecutable. 
Well, that I think it should be prosecutable. Uh, they could say, but don't don't go out out of your way to arrest these people. But I, I see. I understand some of that, uh, but I think it's that the city doesn't want the cost of prosecuting all those people. That's it, basically. That's if you got enough people stealing, you're going to let you get away with it. Mm -hmm. You know, because they don't have the money to prosecute you. If they started arresting everybody who even stole a, a gumball, you can bet that would all stop. Sure, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's... It, so how do you feel? I mean, you as a senior citizen well not, <laughs> not not yet but you're you're heading towards senior citizen at what point do you become a senior oh no citizen? i think uh, we are yeah i think uh, aren't you at 65, 65 i think you're a senior citizen you're a senior citizen okay yeah you're a senior citizen how do you feel about the streets at night i mean do you feel safe uh i wouldn't walk around them no okay so you've got a car See, I got a car. To begin with, that's, New Yorkers don't have cars, right? We, if we have, so them, I would definitely, I would definitely not use. I, occasionally, I used to use Bart and Muni. I would not get on them anymore. Really? No. Bart is down like from the pandemic. I think Bart now has thirty percent of the ridership they used to have. Really. Yeah, well, Bart, just, in case no, one, people no one's on it. In case you don't know, it is, BART stands for Bay Area Rapid Transit. Uh, you know, and it, it travels all over the Bay Area, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but, uh, gee, I mean, it, it, that's my city. I love my city, you know. I love my hometown. I love what it was. It was. I, I look at, sometimes I see, uh, what was it, we were watching this show called Chance, which was shot in San Francisco with the, um, 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 I'm trying to remember the guy's name now, uh, but my mind is, of course, shot. Um, you, Laurie. Uh, and uh, I, I watched the show and I'm saying, Marjorie, oh, that's where I used to go live, or that's near where I used to live, or that's where, uh, you know, where probably the area where Bubbles lives, because they were talking about Cow Hollow in one case. And uh, I'm watching it and just, I say, I so miss that city. I so love that city. I look at it and I just feel a, a feeling about that city that I don't think I've ever had for any, any other city that I've ever lived in in my life. I mean, I had, I had a romance going here with New York in the, uh, in the 70s, uh, but uh, that, that romance has turned into, boy, this is a boring city. <laughs> <You know? laughs> uh, but... Uh, I really love San Francisco. There's just there was something about the architecture, about the fog, about uh, you know I can't I can't even begin to tell people the feeling the visceral feeling you got from living in San, with San Francisco. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I was. Uh, yeah, when I started out doing comedy, it just seemed very romantic, running around the city, and it was a cool place. It was a cool place, exactly. And great, great, you know, things like yeah, Coit Tower. I grew up right in the shadow of Coit Tower. On my window, as I went to sleep every night, there was Coit Tower, you know. And then I would fall asleep and dream that Coit Tower uprooted itself and came down to play with me. Really? Yeah, yeah. I later realized, of course, once I studied Freud, why I was so obsessed by Coit Tower. <laughs> so... Uh, you know. Well, you know what Coit Tower is. Uh. It, well, it's supposed to be a fireman's nozzle, isn't it? Right, right. Yeah, yeah because Lily Hitchcock Coit used to go to the fire, uh, loved the fireman. She just loved the fire. Well, really loved the fireman. She would go to the, uh, uh, to the, um, um, uh, what do you call it, the uh, um, firehouses, and she would uh, probably screw her way through them, you know. But she also, you know, she, the other thing is Lily Hitchcock Coit. She was just a fabulously wealthy person, wasn't she? Do you know who she was exactly? I've just heard the name, yeah. Yeah. Lily Hitchcock Coit um, liked to dress as a man and then go to men's functions, like stag parties and, you know, and 
and uh, you know a lot of the, because there were a lot of men's clubs in those days, and she would just dress up as a man and go to them. That was her big deal. But she loved the firemen of San Francisco, and as a tribute, she built this tower. It's an amazing piece of architecture. Yeah, it is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, nothing like it in the world. Can you can you name a, 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 any kind of structure that looks like that? Yeah. No, it's got. Uh, I think it's got some fairly interesting murals inside. Oh, inside it was during. Um, it was built in 1933, I was told, and it was a. a, a, a on the edge of the uh, depression, and they had the EP, the what do they call it, the work, WPA, the Work Projects uh, Administration, and they paid an artist to do their art. And one of the things an artist did, and I can't remember who the artist was, was all these fantastic murals on the first floor of uh, of Coit Tower. If you ever go to San Francisco, go to Coit Tower. It, it, it's just amazing, just amazing. So I haven't been there in years. No, I'm going to go again. You got me. <laughs> I need to see it. Well, they have all those great murals, and then I one t- one time in my whole life, and I lived on Telegraph Hill. I went up in the elevator and went to the top of Coit Tower, which you can do as well. And it's just uh, you know, uh, it's things like that that San Francisco has that are so special. You know, the Golden Gate Bridge. There's no other bridge in America that look or in the world that looks like that. You know, you want to say San Francisco. You want to do a, a a poster about San Francisco. If you do, you don't have to put San Francisco on it. All you have to do is put a picture of that bridge. You know. So I mean, it, it's an amazing city, and to see it going to rack and ruin. And I'm sure it will come out the other side of this. You know, it's not going to be like this always. But for the time being, it is. And that's sad. Because that's like, that's like, uh, oh, I spray painting on a Picasso. You know? It's terrible. Maybe we won't come. Or maybe we're just heading towards this dystopia. Well, you could be heading towards a dystopia. But I would imagine, maybe not in your lifetime, that all these problems will have gone away and gone somewhere else. You know, but why they pick San Francisco? I have no idea. That's not a place to be homeless. Yeah, yeah, I uh, would pick a warmer place for sure. And then what they brought up was that uh, it's become literally the home of technology in this country. All the major companies have headquarters there, or on the peninsula. Uh, Apple, for instance, has their big. Hub down down in the down in the uh, peninsula. Cupertino, Cupertino, and and in San Francisco, Twitter is uh, the old uh, 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 your old building. Well, the old furniture mart where I used to do my programs every morning. We had our offices in that building on the f- ground floor. It had its own special entrance, so there was that. Uh, so you know, I mean, I. Uh, I just, I, I just love that. I, you know, I felt more uh, when I lived there. I didn't care about. It. When I was growing up there. I didn't care about it. I didn't, didn't think it was anything special. But then again, I didn't have to live anywhere else. All right. But then I left San Francisco and I went out across the country working at various radio stations and so on, and Houston, Texas, and then Minneapolis, Minnesota, then finally New York, where I had a big love affair with the city here. And then this petered out, and I went back to San Francisco out of sheer desperation, and uh, because somebody offered me a, a, a an audition at a radio station, I was going to do a week for them. And after the week, this was a KML, they offered me a job. Uh, how lucky am I? You know, wow. I mean, uh, and and all of a sudden, I went across the Golden Gate Bridge one day, and I said. You know, I never, I always took this for granted. I've been across this bridge, what, three, four hundred times, maybe more, maybe a thousand times. And I've never appreciated it. And now I can look at either side of it and go, isn't that the most miraculous city I've ever seen in my life? And I fell in love with San Francisco again, you know. And, uh, I, uh, you know, I mean, I, I often said I went back to San Francisco and became a success to get even. 
uh, <laughs> because when I was a kid, you know, everybody was giving me a bad time, and I couldn't find a job in San Francisco at a radio station. So I, they said, what you have to do is you have to leave San Francisco and go out and work elsewhere and work your way back to San Francisco. And I eventually worked my way all the way to New York, and there was no reason to come back to San Francisco because I was in the largest market in the United States. Um, but eventually that kind of died, as most of parts of my career have, and I went to San Francisco. And all of a sudden I fell in love with it all over again, you know? Uh, and, and you've been in love with it. You, you, you love that city, right? Uh, well, I don't like what it's become, no. No, you don't like what it's become, but for many years you probably had a love affair with that city. I did, especially in the early years of stand-up. Yeah, yeah. And it was a great place for stand-ups. Why, why was yeah. it especially great for stand-ups? I mean, you had two major cities for stand-up. One was Boston, and then there was San Francisco. Uh, and it wasn't L.A., folks. That's where you went to go get into movies and television and things like that. But why do you think San Francisco became such a hub for comedy? Well, there were so many funny people here, and then there were so many places that you could actually perform. So it was, uh, you could do five sets a night here when I started out. So. In different clubs? Yeah. There was, of course, there was a punchline in the uh, other cafe, but there was, like, uh, there was a bunch of one-nighters, or just clubs that had open mic nights, and yeah. you could go from one to the other to the other, and that's how you got good starting out. You just got to keep doing it. What about the cost of living? Was it reasonable at that time for a comic? Well, I can tell you, I kept a, uh, I kept a journal in 1987. Or everything I spent in January of 1987, and <laughs> including that trip to New York, mm -hmm. I spent under a thousand dollars. Living in San Francisco, you mean? For yeah, my rent was two fifty. Yeah. I flew back. I had not. I had a follow-up audition in New York in January of '87, and I stopped and did. I uh, did that, and then I the next day I did. You were doing a show in New York that week. Oh and right. I was on. I was on with uh, Wendy Williams and Bob Guccione, Junior. Son, I think. Junior. Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. So, and that's when you did Letterman. That's what I was doing. That they kept uh, they kept looking at me to say, "Come back, let's. We want to see you do another set." So I came back and did another set at uh, Catch a Rising Star. And uh, I remember that night there was some guy before me that went on and he didn't do well, and then he started screaming and yelling, and uh, he ran off stage and the big commotion and. And uh, Bob Mo Robert Morton was there with me, and he goes, "Oh, that guy, he does that all the time." It was Larry David. <laughs> he just got up and left, got walked off the stage. Oh, he, he would start screaming, and not come, well, this is funny. What's wrong with you people? <laughs> well, there were years where people didn't find him funny. You mm -hmm. know, he had a very oblique sense of humor. That's a great word. <laughs> you know, that's what uh, that's what Elvis said to Steve Martin. What? Uh, Steve Martin opened for Ann Margaret, and there's a story I saw somewhere, and uh, Steve Martin was talking about. It. He said that he opened for Ann Margaret in Las Vegas, and backstage Elvis came back to, it, and he walked over to Steve Martin and said, "Son, you have an oblique sense of humor." Oh, did he say that? Yeah, and Steve Martin said that was actually the perfect word. <laughs> you no, know, it's amazing. I just use that term. I've never used that term in my life to describe yeah. a comic. Wow. Yeah, you see, you and Elvis think me, alike. Me and Elvis, yeah. Well, when I get up to heaven with Elvis, you know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what was the, the joke? I'm trying to remember the whole joke, I, and I, I don't think I can remember it now sufficiently. But about a guy who dies and goes to heaven, and they go, well, you know, it's great up here. You're gonna, uh, uh, no, you're, uh, excuse me, he goes to hell. And he said, don't worry, it's great down here. We got a great band. You're gonna love it. So he goes over and he goes to see the band, and there's like uh, Jimi Hendrix and uh, uh, Jim Morrison, and on and on and on and on and on. 
And he says, boy, this isn't hell. This is kind of like heaven. And all of a sudden, uh, Jimi Hendrix goes, okay, one, two, three, close to you. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> That's funny. I never heard that one. Yeah, yeah. I think I, I didn't do justice to the joke, but that's pretty much it. Yeah. So anyway, I uh, I feel bad about San Francisco, and I, I don't feel like I necessarily want to go back there to live. Although, uh, maybe it'll come back. It did. You were in New York in the 70s. I think uh, New York was a hellhole then. Oh, apparently. New York becomes a hellhole. It's becoming a hellhole again, but it goes back and forth, and it fixes itself, and it moves on. Hey, listen, want to talk next? Nick, did you just hear me? I can't talk anymore. You want to talk next week? We shall. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles Brown. Yay! Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Well, hello, everybody. Here I am after... Uh what about a week i guess so we haven't been on actually uh, yeah i think it's been a week uh, uh more a little more than that but uh, anyway here we are and and very few people waiting to come on so you know i guess nobody really missed me and uh, and i uh r really uh, i why am i even doing this right but anyway i there are a lot of people out there listening right now and I'm sure what they want to do is to hear what went on with me in the last week and uh, uh, people are saying are you better and that's kind of a hard thing to say let me bring some people in here just so that we uh, we have them uh, on the program and ready to go uh, and uh, say hello to uh, let's see here there's uh there's uh, our good old friend Jeff Stein, and uh, there's our good old friend, uh, the lovely and attractive Josh Wheeler. And uh, let me bring in uh, Alan uh, here. He, he's waiting to come on. There we go. Um, I probably should explain what happened during the, the last week to me. And uh, it, was, it, was not a, it was not a pleasant experience. Um, for some reason, uh, it was I think it was on Thursday night, I wasn't feeling well, um, and um, I, I didn't know what was exactly wrong with me, and um, I went to sleep that night, and I woke up the next morning, and I uh, went and uh, checked myself out, and I'm trying to remember, see, I'm trying to remember the dates now, because it's, it's kind of a little on the... Uh, on the strange side, um, we had two friends who came in. Yeah, they came in to stay Friday night, okay? And so Thursday, I was kind of feeling iffy. Friday, I was feeling really out, somewhat out of it. And um, we, um, I'm trying to remember if we, if we, st if I felt I had COVID or didn't have COVID, but I had a temperature started having a temperature and um the people who were visiting us was buddy love and his wife rachel and it's i'm just so lucky that rachel happens to be a doctor <laughs> uh which is you know the best of all possible things if you feel you're not feeling well and she says you got a temperature and i said yeah she said, well, um, you know, go, go t well, I said, maybe I should take one of my, you know, we have 80,000 <laughs> COVID tests in the house. Maybe I should use one of them. So I, um, I went and, and I took the COVID test and I came up positive for COVID. <laughs> well, luckily there's a doctor in the house, okay? So she calls down, oh, I know what it was. It was Friday night that I wasn't feeling well. It was Saturday while they were that while they were here, that they uh, because I, I remember that we we on Saturday had to call up to the drugstore, which was only open till one thirty in the afternoon. But anyway, she said uh, she immediately handed me a mask, okay, and uh, I, I was feeling really crappy. I had a hard time sleeping the night before, 
And then she, uh, she immediately called down to my pharmacy and ordered me up some Paxlovid. Um, so I, uh, somebody went down and got it for me. And that, uh, luckily, we had a doctor in the house. But boy, was I feeling like crap. I mean, just really not well. And I can't figure it out because we still don't know how I got it. You know, we have no idea how I got it. Marjorie didn't come down with it. You know, she avoided it. I mean, as soon as she heard that I had it, I was then like a leper. And I was told to go to the a guest room and stay there for the rest of my life and not come out until I don't sneeze, cough, or feel like crap anymore. Um, so I went and I stayed in the other room, you know, and I didn't come out to see many people. I would come out and see them, but I'd wear a mask and they wear their masks. And uh, But uh, uh, it was just lucky that I had a doctor here because otherwise maybe I would have had to wait till the end of the weekend to get the Paxlovid. Uh, and um, I was pretty ill for, I would say, until about last, uh, I think Wednesday was the first day I was feeling halfway decent but I have kind of this fatigue uh, from having it uh, and by the way if you're listening um, um, all you folks out there in uh, at YouTube and your and your algorithms are going to work uh, don't uh, don't give me a, a warning or or give me a, a strike because I'm talking about the fact that I got COVID you know um, it, 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 you know, I, I thought about that as a possibility if I talked about that tonight, in which case, you know, YouTube can go fuck themselves. Uh, but I'm, you know, I was, I was really, I was really quite sick. Uh, I, the first time I got it, I hardly got it at all. And then I got the Paxlovid before it really had caught hold. So that's how that turned out. All huh. right. But uh, uh, so I didn't, uh, I, but I felt a, a lot worse this time than I did the last time. And it was, it was pretty terrible. And I still feel tired, weak, you know. Uh, and uh, I may do uh, only one show again next week. I don't know. I don't know. It's going to be able to, I'm going to have to tell by, I'm going to do the Monday show. And uh, then we'll see how I'm feeling as to whether I do, how many shows I do again next week, because I still have, what do you call it? Do you call it what do they call COVID, post-COVID uh, whatever? I don't know, you know, where you're tired and you're exhausted. and Long COVID. Long COVID, yeah, long haul. I mean, yeah, I hope it takes more than a couple of weeks before you know. Well, no, they no, no. Don't say this, anything. This no, don't, a, don't say anything that's even close to having an opinion about the, about the disease. Okay, because I don't want those assholes at YouTube saying that we're giving out bad information. All right, so just stay away from that. Okay, you know, I I think you'll feel better next week, and that's not a medical opinion. That's a personal. No, I, 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 from what I've read, uh, usually there's maybe a two to three week period afterward. Where you still feel kind of crappy, you know, it's not a hundred percent. It's uh, like the flu, but can be worse, of course. I, you know, it didn't feel like the flu. It felt more like something else. I mean, I couldn't figure it out. My breathing was difficult. It was a whole bunch of things going to work while I was I was trying to sleep that that night. That was just not. I something was not right, you know. And uh, so. Um, uh, you know, I actually had a really complete case of COVID. And where and I got it, is, we have no idea. You this know? was worse than the first time you had it? Well, that's what I said. The first time, I hardly had it at all. Right, right. Uh, yeah, okay. I, I don't know if I even really had it, okay? I tested <clears throat> positive, but I, I didn't feel it or anything like that. Here, I felt it. You know, it was terrible. It been been terrible. But the funny part about it is, as I say again... You know, the night before I really came down with it heavy, I kissed Marjorie goodnight. You know, we slept in the same bed together. Uh, I'm breathing on her, all of that. She didn't come down with it. Uh, but I came down with it and had no idea where I got it from. Huh. You know, because I don't go out that much. I think we'd gone to a restaurant to have some lunch or something. But if I got it, she should have gotten it, right? 
But, not necessarily. Yeah, but not necessarily. So, anyway, she didn't get it, but man, did she t treat me like a leper once I got it. You know, like, stay away from me. Go stay in the other room. Don't breathe. I would actually be like she, 12 feet from her. She's in the bed, and I'm in the hallway, and I've got my mask on, and she's got her mask on, and I move one inch closer into the bedroom. Don't do that. Don't. <laughs> you know. It was like uh, it was. It was very, very, very interesting to tell you the damn truth. But uh, it, well, it, we're happy that you're back and you're feeling better. Yeah, I'm feeling somewhat better. You know, I tried to avoid doing anything that was. Uh, uh, Gabnet related except for posting a few shows when people did shows uh, because I just didn't want to you know do anything that would put a strain on me and and yet I had all kinds of stuff being put a strain on me S certain individual uh, with his program had problems and uh -huh. you know, not last night he couldn't be talking about that what Jack <laughs> last night with his program I don't know well he's thinking of stopping doing his program so yeah so he says yeah well no he's he's informed me he, he wants to okay you know so we'll uh, I think I think I think we have Josh waiting in the wings all right oh. so you know uh, that's always a, a possibility but no no he told me today he wants to not do it and he, I said could you give me two months to like figure out what I'm gonna do and he said yes, and then he wrote me another note saying, can you let me know a date definite? And I wrote him back and said, listen, you said I had two months to figure this thing out, you know, but if you want to stop it, tonight's a good night to stop it, you know? I mean, <laughs> I, you know, I, we're, I, we're incapacitated. I was incapacitated, and I wrote him, I wrote him back and said, just don't, he had some problems with, if, if, small problems, not big ones. But we've had very little problems with his doing the show and everything and getting it through. And last night, uh, two couple of nights ago, he had a problem or something like that. And uh, that, but you know, that was that was fine. But I, I wrote him and I said, please, I don't want to have to deal with this. I've, I'm just coming off of COVID, and I don't want to know about it. He didn't even say, oh, sorry to hear you had COVID. It was just, well, wait a minute, I've got yet another problem, you know. And I don't want, you know, it's funny, it's hard to deal with those things. When, when uh, Another side effect of COVID is you can't deal with that crap, you know. You really can't. Well, anytime you're sick, you don't want to deal How many with here it. have had COVID? Uh, am I the only one? Uh, you've had it, right? So you know what I'm talking about, Josh? Oh, yeah. It, it, even the small things, you know, like... Uh, uh, your wife says, uh, I can't get a certain channel on the cable. And you just don't want to do it. You know, you don't, you just want to lie there and heal yeah. in your pool of sweat. You know? Yeah, she had it at the same time as I did, too. So oh. we were both there. Oh, 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 well, I wish Marjorie had gotten it because yeah. then we could have stayed in the same room together. For this yeah, right. That's, we didn't have to, you know. Instead, I felt like I was in a cell. I was, I was in my little cell. Uh, the jailer will come by and see you occasionally and see if you're okay and you haven't tried to hang yourself, you Lying know. Food under the door. Yeah, yeah. So, um, it's yeah. It, it's not easy. Yes, Jeff. I talked to uh, my Connecticut source, who talked to Marjorie. That's Pam and Mar Marjorie, who are talking about how you're doing, every, about every day or every other. Oh, day. really? That was very nice. Checking you. Yeah. You were alive. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I wasn't <laughs> really particularly crappy, but yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't cranky or anything. I just. Oh, oh, oh did she say <laughs> I was cranky? Uh, Jeff just threw you under the bus. <laughs> no, he threw Marjorie under the bus. Oh well, okay, Marjorie. <laughs> Oops. By the way, do not take and none of this is uh, opinion on uh, on COVID and. Uh, fake cures or anything like that so uh you know and i'm, I'm sure i'll still get bounced for it you watch you watch i'm for so talking about it that you're feeling better we're talking about the fact that i had covid and, re and relating that to people you know um i'm just saying that don't don't screw around if you get it you know it's still out there 
And I think that maybe we become a little too loosey-goosey about the way we are handling this situation. Our mayor has said, oh, it's, the crisis is all over with. And uh, uh, the president has gone, the crisis is all over with. And that's the official word. But I still got it. So, you yeah. know, I mean, to me, it isn't over with. The medical community is not saying it's over with. Right. But, you know, so, I mean, uh, it, it, it was it was pretty it was pretty, pretty rough go. Not easy. Not easy at all. Uh, but you, do you say you had it, Vernon? No, you didn't have it. Uh, who else said they had it besides Josh. You, just Josh and me? You and Josh. Oh, well, Josh, let's start coughing. You know. <laughs> I, 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 I honestly believe the reason we only have like uh, four, uh, five people here right now is that everybody else is afraid to call because they might get COVID. Now that is not you shouldn't that'll get you canceled. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So you know, but I'm I'm uh, you know, I'm on the mend and uh you know, it was uh I I, I was even debating whether to go on come on tonight and then I just went it would be good for me to do it. So yeah. here I am. But uh, do I look I look I don't look sick, do I? No. No. You look fine. You know, the only thing, the only other problem is, you know what doesn't go away? COVID goes away. Pollen doesn't. Oh, yeah. boy, that hit me hard this year. Oh, it's, it's supposedly this is a really bad year for it. God, yeah. I'm living 24 hours a day on these uh, antihistamines. Yeah. yeah. Well, it doesn't work for me. I just, I just suffer with it, you know. Especially, more. especially does my eyes. My eyes get all puffy. And what do you, everything. what do you, what do you take? Just out of curiosity. Uh, I take a Paxlovid for, for, for. No, no, no. I'm talking about for I, your allergies. I, I take if I if I if I if I get a hernia, I take Paxlovid. You know, you take it for anything. No, um, no. I just have some stuff, some eye drops, anti itch dro uh, eye drops that I use, and I also use like fl a phony version of Flonase from Costco. But that, okay. does, that, that that never seems to work. No, I take it all the time. It doesn't work. Yeah. So I started taking Zyrtec, the non, you know, this yeah. second generation stuff that's supposed to not make you drowsy. And it doesn't make me drowsy. It doesn't work. So I talked to my allergist and he said, don't take 10 milligrams like they suggest. Take 20, 30, up to 40, and you'll be just fine. So I'm at 30 and everything's fine. Really? I haven't tried Zyrtec. I've, I've <clears throat> never really tried that. You can get it at Costco under their brand for cheap. So it's called <clears throat> Fozertex or something. Yeah, uh, whatever they call hey, it. Hey, Patrick. Hi. Hi. He wrote me some very nice notes, hoping I was okay. And uh, you know, I, I, he, he just wants to make sure that I'm still alive. You know, it's. I don't well, know. And and I added a threat too. What was? What? I said if you weren't going to get better, I was going to come give you a kiss. <laughs> and that still holds so yeah. you better start really getting better by next week Kevin wrote me a lot uh, who else wrote me uh, Ver Vernon did you write me I think you did or me, I, Alan wrote you Alan wrote me yep. yeah he sent you a text yeah. yep uh, and uh, so you know I mean it was just it, it was just Something that you don't want to get, folks. It's not fun, and it's still out there. So be careful, anyway. I'm sure if you walk down the street and stuff like that, it's not a big problem. But if you go into a restaurant, well, you can't go into a restaurant and and uh, wear a mask because how are you going to eat? Okay. But I, I find that if I, I'm going to use a mask when I go to the grocery store and so on, you know, places. I like haven't that. stopped. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I mean, I got loosey-goosey because they said it was okay to get loosey-goosey and, and look what happened, you know. So just do all the precautions, folks, that one needs to do. I won't tell you where they what they are because I may get them wrong and then YouTube, the bastards that they are, will then give me... See, I got a warning last time. The next time, I'm actually going to get a, um, <laughs> what's it called? Um, uh, I don't know, a punishment or whatever. It'll take two years for him to catch up with you anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. You're right. The last one was two years later. Oh, yeah. And by the, by the way, there was a show. The identical show was also up, and they didn't 
ding that one. <laughs> but there were two versions of it up, and both of them had the same stuff being talked about. None of which, by the way, was misinformation, as they claim. But, you know, they do everything by algorithms and so on. Hey, Tony! How you feeling? You know, you know what it's time to do before we go any further? Clean your lens. It's it's an old computer, though, I think. I think that's why the, the camera's not that good. Well, but it, I think if you actually took a t piece of tissue... Is that bad? Let me see. Really? Is this, yeah. this the little eye? Let me see here. Oh, now, much better. It, much, much better. It's look, an old look computer. At, look at that. Look at that. Yeah. 100% better. Because yeah, he, really. He never cleaned. I thought it was more like a glamour shop. <laughs> yeah, one of those grand, gl yeah glam lenses. Yeah, yeah. Imagine if you clean the windows to the house, you could see outside too. Yeah. I got the guys fix uh, painting up here tomorrow again. That to continue with work. Painting over the wallpaper. Uh, no, actually, this is they, they're doing the ceiling. It's just touching it up, really. Yeah. yeah. Do you have a brick house, by the way? Yeah, it's all brick. Okay, so do you? Well, how often are you? Do you have to do the pointing on it? Oh, actually, that's a good question. My brother did the pointing. I think he had to ask him in the roof about. I think it was about two or three years ago he did it. Oh, really? They did the whole the whole house. Yeah, all the they, bricks? they were outside. Yeah, my mother because my mother was still alive, so she's only gone two years. So it had to be about three years. I remember doing it. It took him a while because they were drilling and putting all the stuff in between yeah. the bricks. They yeah. were making a lot of noise. I remember she that, was my an, father I passed. That's away, pretty yeah. expensive, though, isn't it? Yeah, he. I can. It, it was a lot. It wasn't cheap. I know that. I know it took him a while. It was noisy because she was complaining. Oh, they make it. So how long is it going to take? And Merle's like, they got to they gotta do this, he said. So we did it. And so it had to be, a, she's going two years. So it had to be about three, three and a half years ago. Really? I remember them being here, Alex, like two weeks. I remember them maybe less than really? that. I have to ask him. Mine has taken like two and a half, three years so far in this apartment house. I bet you got eight stories. A little bigger. What? What did you say, Vernon? I said you're eight stories up tall. Yeah, that's right. Cool. Your house is bigger. That's true. That's true. And but they've got like the courtyards finished, and they but they still haven't taken down all that scaffolding, and that's what I hate. That's what I want to see gone. You know, is the uh, is the scaffolding. I that way they'll chase off all the homeless people, right? Well, I call it the uh, I call the scaffolding around the apartment house the uh, the homeless shelter because that's where all the homeless people. Yeah. You're right, Alex. I see a lot of those. My brother goes into work in Manhattan every day, and he sees a lot of the uh, the buildings all like getting worked on more and more. There He's are more of them. And done. there are more of them in this town right now. I mean, that's what like, he said. It's yeah. amazing how much work is getting done. I like, really? Now, I want the business I want to be in when I die. Uh, mm -hmm. And then I get reincarnated, and then I have to find another line of work than this because you know you can't come back twice as a broadcast celebrity. Well, you never know, man. You go up and make you come back. Not allowed to. Yeah. Not allowed to. That's so, right. so I want to come back as a guy who owns a scaffolding company. Oh, they must because clean up. I found out, you know, they got these scaffolds. They got the one all the way around the apartment house. You know how much they pay a month for that. <laughs> How much? Fifty thousand dollars a month. Holy shit! And it's been up for three years now. <laughs> oh man, that's a lot of money. It's time to raise the tenants' mm -hmm. rents. Well, I guess so. Except mine, they can't. So, yeah. well, given what it's for, their insurance is probably forty-five thousand dollars a month. So I don't. <laughs> well, you know, don't uh, who, know. who knows? I mean, uh, never know. <laughs> no, but you're required to put those scaffoldings up mm -hmm. because if you're doing oh. work. They don't want all the hammers and stuff to fall on people and stuff like right. that. So, uh, uh, you know, but it, it's uh, it's it's it, it looks ugly. I want it to be over with so I can have at least this apartment house back in some shape, you know. So, but uh, be that as it may, uh, your girlfriend. Patrick had had COVID recently as well. Yeah, her son. Her son got it. Oh wow. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I'm beginning to think maybe it's not as uh, as virulent as it was initially. The original version was just killer. I mean, it had to be. I mean, I went over to Mount Sinai, and they literally had tents outside Mount Sinai wow. to take yeah. care of the over. And they had refrigerated trucks. Because people were well, dying. That, that was very there. morbid. The refrigerated yeah, trucks. Yeah, I he did, did not... it in Los Angeles too. Huh? 
They did it in Los Angeles. Oh, well, they did it all over the country. I mean, you know. the impact was yeah. incredible. But, uh, you know, the social um, um, toll that it took on this country yes. is just amazing. Yep. Uh, but anyway, so we, uh, by the way, uh, you know, the most delightful thing of the week for me, at least when mm -hmm. I was sick, I was lying there kind of coughing and... <laughs> And, and, you know, whatever. I had, had coughs. What, what what did I have? I had a cough. And what's yeah, the, did, you, did you have the chills, Alex, too? Was you, like, no, like the you know, I did, though. I had a temperature up, up around 100, all right? Oh, yeah, it's still a temperature. And then one night, I'm lying there in bed, and all of a sudden, I felt the back of my neck, and my entire shirt was sopping wet. <gasps> yeah, the sweats. And, yeah. and I went to sleep that night, and I woke up sopping sweat sweatshirt, your t-shirt and no temperature just you sweated it out sweated it saying, right out that is the say. greatest thing when you've got some kind of a temperature and then you start sweating it out and that's you wake up in a pool of sweat and you go take your temperature and it's down it's to like 97.6 or something like that you just go that's that's okay that's all right so far as i'm concerned yeah so she used fever, to say that all, like bung me up like sweat it out what? Fever is the body's way of healing itself. And so if you have a low-grade fever of 100 or something like that, if you can tolerate it, it's good not to try and lower it with whatever. Well, what, these, what I did, but I did. things my mother told me. Well, here, here was what I was told by a doctor told me this. Mm -hmm. he, yeah. he suggested using Tylenol, not using aspirin, since aspirin's not as good for your stomach. Yeah, Tylenol, but, take, but take about four Tylenol. And then drink lots of water. Liquid, yeah. And then get under the covers, more covers than you need, and just let yourself sweat it out overnight. And the next morning, you'll have a, have a normal uh, temperature again. So. My mother used to take a lot of the quilt, like quilts, and if I had a temperature, she would really, like, tighten me up with it. And then she'd say, sleep, sleep with it. Yeah. And then don't, yeah, unless you got to go to the bathroom, get up. If not, and many stay how, how you, many times You must I, have to take it off around your neck, though, right? <laughs> You're trying to kill me. <laughs> Ma, I can't breathe. Don't worry about it. Yeah, take your hands off my neck, Mom. Please. <laughs> the pillow, is it supposed to be on my neck? <laughs> no, but I, I, I yeah. used to do that when I, when I, when I had like. But you did say that. When I was, it. when I had a temperature and was sick, I would do exactly that. I would take the Tylenol and then drink, eat like three. Four or five glasses of water, a lot of water. She used to, yeah. She used to say, "Stay liquid, yeah, yeah. Leave it yeah. by my bed, and yeah. then just cover Stay myself high, up high. so I would sweat, and I sweated it out overnight." Yes, uh, Vernon. Did you ever figure out where you caught it from? Because you never yeah. leave your apartment. I know. We, I wonder how you got that. That's why I didn't get it. We we go up the street at Casey's this place called a uh, Harlem Tavern, and they have a very good hamburger up there, and I like to have a hamburger there, and we went there. That's not the only place we went, and so maybe, you got it up maybe I got it from somebody having lunch up there. You know, probably. Yeah. But Marjorie didn't get it. That's the point. That's yeah. That's weird. You're in the same house. We we kiss each other. I wonder other. if she's immune to it now. Maybe maybe has body built up an immune to it. Uh, what? Maybe her body built up an immunity to it. No, I don't. There's, there's no immunity to. It. There's no. Immunity yeah, to she it. may have better antibodies just because she's different. Well, she had a worse version of COVID than I did before. So maybe it created a certain amount of immunity. I don't know. Right. For, don't know. for whatever reason, she was lucky and fortunate That's she right. didn't get it. But the way she was treating me like a leper, I was, yeah, I heard you were saying, I was hoping yeah. she would get it. Okay. <laughs> you should have breathed on it. I come after you with Lysol. <laughs> you know, because, now, uh, now we know to get news from Jeff. Even yeah, Jeff's though, got to school. Even though Pam says, don't say anything. <laughs> Jeff, will, Jeff, well, Jeff will still tell us. Well, our doctor, who actually made a house call here, yeah, technically house. made That's a house nice. call. Yeah. Uh, our, our doctor said, she said, uh, at, and after five days, she said, uh -huh. you probably won't have the temperature or any of the symptoms anymore. Uh, you don't have to, you know, wear a mask in I the said. house or whatever. But if you go out, still wear a mask for about a week. But uh, you know... Funny you said that, Alex. I went. To, I'm going to Kifu, which is close to the house. I'm seeing a lot more people wearing masks in my neighborhood. Like, yeah, I see more it, masks being worn again. Well, I, I think, think maybe because of the weather, it's getting no, nice. No, I, out I think country. a lot of people are getting it. The allergies. A lot of a lot of allergies around the it, country, Tony. Yeah, oh, the I mean, mask, I, it does help with allergies. Helps. I should wear it then. If my allergies get bad from the pop, from the uh, yeah, wear it. Wear it when you're outside. It'll help your allergies. Yeah. 
<clears throat> so anyway, uh, Patrick, how you been? I've been all right. Um, just enjoying sort of decent weather around here. Yeah. Uh, you know, been outside a lot. Just enjoying that. Um, and waiting for new wheels for my wheelchair because uh, the tread had worn down. What are you getting? Those hot spring. wheels? Those hot wheels? <laughs> wheels? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> well, the, the brake don't catch on the wheels anymore. So it, it, it time. Oh, the brakes don't catch on the wheels. Yeah, the, they, the, the brakes have a, uh, a pattern on them so that when they connect to the wheel, the tread and the pattern on the uh, brake, you know, they prevent each other from moving. So, so do you have, just have to put new tires on there, or do you have to put... Yeah, get, get the new rubber part of the tire, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I'll be getting those next week or so. I mean, it's it dangerous enough that I can't drive now mm -hmm. because transferring in and out of the car becomes somewhat of a gymnastic feat because the chair kind of moves a little bit as I try to get into it. So rather than landing on my ass and having an issue, I haven't driven in a couple of weeks while I'm waiting for the tire to show up, so. they give you a ticket for that shit or what? What's that? Will they give you a ticket for that shit or what? <laughs> Yeah, your brake brakes don't work. You know, you've got to. Well, no, 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 you're, you're the tread on your tires. I mean, you got to go get a fix a ticket and all that shit. It no, um, they, <laughs> they it standardized. It, I mean, it's it just like going for your tire for your car. It's standardized. Uh, what do you get, Michelin's or Goodyear's? <laughs> We're so cold, Kevin. <laughs> Firestone. Firestone. No, Schwinn. They get some good ones, dude. <laughs> Schwinn. Yeah. Uh, Patrick, not, not do you have to pay you, for the I'd, tires? I'd complain if they're not lasting you, Pat. I mean, shit. Well, I, I'm I'm paying for them out of pocket this time because waiting for insurance. Right. I won't get them until 21 June. Oh. Mm -hmm. you, you need to get some good steel belted ones or something. Racing slicks. You, you, when when there's when there when it's snowing, do you have chains for the you know? Shit, I wish. <laughs> I, I, Irons. See, the, the problem for me is I don't weigh enough, so like there, for snow, I slide around. If I were heavier, um, you have the weight to keep you down and you push, but you know I. So no winter. No, no snow tires. Well, when you're in, when you're in Wisconsin, don't they fucking spike the tires and shit like they do with the cars? Can't you go out and get them spiked? Well, let me well, ask, let me ask you about. Like, let me ask you something. They put uh, on I, chains. When, when I you used, do that here in the snow. When I used to live in, um, where was it? Klamath Falls, Oregon. You were allowed to have tires up there with with uh, spikes. You know, stu yeah. studded snow tires. Yeah, you do you do that up, you know, in Oregon or wherever. You can you can carry. You I can don't think you can do it in California. It's against the law in California. Yeah, because they said it eats up the pavement. Of yeah, the but road. but the thing is, do they still make tires that are studded yeah. snow tires? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Because I love those. The reason I love them is because I didn't have to put goddamn chains on my car. Yeah, well, you know, my <laughs> buddy up in Oregon used to have me out a set of spike tires up in his garage, and whenever it got snowy towards the winter, he throw them onto his truck or whatever. Well, I had to put some chains. That would eat up your gloves, well, though. On I our see honeymoon, why you don't do that. On our honeymoon, right after we got married at Lake Tahoe, it was a terrible snowstorm. We had to get out of there, and so I had to buy a set of chains and have them put on the car. And as I'm driving with the chains, I look over at Marjorie and I say, God, now I know what it was I hated about chains on snow tires, on tires. And she said, what? I said, it's like wearing a condom. Yep. You know, it's the same effect, basically. Pretty much. You can only go 25 miles an hour. Exactly. Put them on the semi. Yep. They were a pain yep. in the ass. Yeah, exactly. 22-inch tires. 
Yeah. And then it turned out the snow only went so far, and I got rid of them after 25 miles, and I had to pay like 100 bucks for the chains. Yeah. So, yeah. Can you imagine what chains cost for a semi? Oh, well, yeah, I don't want to. They're expensive. Yeah, I'll bet. Yeah. And putting them on must be hell. They're oh, a pain yeah. in the ass. I'll bet. Did you put them on yourself? Yeah. Really? You put them on the duels. On the duel you, you lay them on the ground and then drive over them and snap them up? Yeah, that's one way to do it. Yeah. The other way they, is they to... They fly not... off, and then you get pissed off. And, you yeah, know. yeah. But, you know, it's not that, not that horrible. You know? well, you're not having to do it. That's why it's I, not that horrible. I know, horrible. I know. But, yeah. Uh, but I... Uh, um, uh, here in New York, I, they don't have. I, they don't, I don't think they have studded snow tires, do they, Tony? Oh, I don't know. I don't. I have. I don't really drive, so I don't know. So I, in New York, they salt that. everything, don't they? Uh, in, in, salt. I mean, I know the sanitation part. trucks used to have. You mean like the sanit? I know the sanitation trucks used to have the chains on them. I know that when they used to do the salt. Okay, so I thought they had them back there because those, those roads back there are all concrete, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. They scrape them all the time. Well, you know, they kept saying that the studded snow tires would hurt the asphalt, but what the hell are uh, chains going to do? Hurt the asphalt. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. What a matter. What or a the snow plows. I mean, yeah. that great thing around here is, <clears throat> and I, I've, I know I've had this conversation with people replacing roadways, like in my state. Yeah. They should just replace them again with concrete versus asphalt because every couple of years they have to repave the same roads. And it's because of snow plows where, you know, in the summer, the asphalt to buckle just a little bit and it's no big deal during the summer but during the winter when a plow hit that oh. it'll pull oh. out a chunk of you know asphalt the and rain gets under it it just wide, starts and it, you know six inches deep and then they're out like there trying to fill this in 30 below zero weather so that they don't have accidents and that shit doesn't stay it's it's like it's a cold, cold, cold patch yeah it can't bond so it, yeah. it's just garbage and so yeah we we can't use chains or studded tires on the main roadways around here yeah well anyway uh this week i guess the best news that i got was that wonderful send-off of uh, uh the governor of florida uh what's his name desantis desantis, desantis, yeah. DeSantis his his what could we call it? His kickoff show on Twitter. On Twitter, yes, that was funny. Oh, yeah. that's so wonderful! And of course, they're trying to say so many people were trying to get on that that caused a problem. No, it's that that company's being run so badly now they can't have even a small amount of people trying to get on at a time. Elon Musk is backing him. Well, he's mm -hmm. not backing him. He didn't say no. that. No, he what he said was. What he's money. backing is the opening of dialogue, that everybody should be able to have a dialogue, and that he was simply encouraging And then the whole thing failed. And then the yeah. whole thing failed. So I, I'm, I, I'm waiting to see the circus between DeSantis and Trump. I don't know if it's going to be much of a circus. I think what they're all waiting for, they're, they're all sitting around waiting for, uh, excuse me, my nose is just itching something horrible. Um, I think their problem is is that they 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 see that they want to sit out and wait it out uh, and see what happens to Trump because they feel if he gets in real any real trouble, they then have a shot, okay, and and that could happen any day now. Yes, Patrick. I, I don't think anything going to prevent him from running. No, unless he's in jail. So I'm waiting for Chris Christie to get in and not that he's gonna run that he has a chance, but he's at much of a what's a nice way to put it, asshole. Oh as that's a technical Trump term by the way, in case people aren't familiar with it, referring to a person who is not particularly liked. Go ahead. 
So, anyway, um, I think that Chris Christie would give back to Trump exactly what he would give, and even on a stage with multiple people, I think Chris Christie would be there just to be the one, to be the bulldog, to keep hammering on Trump, to keep him teetering. I mean, I, I... yeah, well, I would never, I would never vote for um, um, Chris Christie, but there are certain elements about Chris Christie I like, and part of it is what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. That he's the kind of guy that can take on Trump and not let him get away with anything, not steal the show. Okay, and and that's that's one of the things I like about him. Yeah, I yeah, do he like thinks, his... He thinks quickly on his feet. Yeah. He's smart, yeah. yeah. He's a smart guy, yeah. And, if not pressed to be serious, can be very funny. Yeah, he's got a... You know, he, he calls the sports talk shows a lot. Well, uh, he calls... Yeah, yeah. He likes and he's it. actually really... I, well, I know it's going to sound crazy. Thing, I like him, Alex. I, I, I like him. do is when uh, uh, he went on the Letterman show, he came out and he sat down... And uh, he Letterman was going to give him a big ration of crap, you know, because he's making yeah. nothing but fun of him for months ahead of time. And Chris Christie says, oh, wait a minute. And he puts his hand in his pocket and pulls out a sandwich <laughs> and starts eating it. And I said, I, you know, if for nothing more, he might get my vote for that, you funny. know. Yeah. He's. I like there's something about him I like. I don't know what it is. Maybe no, that's No, he what has it is. a sense of humor and he yeah. he's somewhat affable, but he's a, he's a, basically a crook just like all the rest of them. Yeah, yeah. but he did have that whole bridge thing. You oh know, yeah, he's, yeah. He's, he's, he he's, had he's, he's, to do that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you know, if we're if if we're gonna be a country full of crooks, at least let's have guys like who who put in a few laughs here and there and punctuate it with laughs. So <laughs> yeah. you know. Uh, what what uh, what do you think is happening with DeSantis, uh, Josh? Uh, do you figure to begin with? Do you think he's got a shot? You know, I don't know. I, I really don't think so. He's not very um, he's not very likable. No, not not outside of his own little stage there. You know that I mean he's he's just like that. You know, local celebrity that. You know, if they try to transplant it somewhere else, it's people or in other words, it, you know, it's wildly popular in its home club or whatever, and then it goes some on the road, and people are like, "What? Well, you know, what's this?" It's, it's an act that doesn't work well out of town. Yeah, it seems like that. You know, and I, I don't think some sort of partnership with Elon Musk is a good idea. I think it was a bad idea for Musk. I mean, come on, he's got all these right. companies yeah. that he doesn't want to alienate people. Oh. You know, and I, I don't, you know, particularly. And Musk has been giving him money and is supporting him. And I mean, I'm a little bit on the fence with this, but I don't completely, also don't completely think it's appropriate for someone who gets as many government contracts as he does to be to be doing that. No, I, mean, I think I, I think he should. You know, if I were if I were giving him advice, I would say Elon. Stick away, stay away from politics. Yeah, I mean, I mentioned to these guys the other day, as you know, if George Soros had a podcast, for example, and let a presidential candidate kick off on his podcast, Republicans would lose their mind, and he doesn't even get government contracts that I'm aware of. Just imagine if he owned some kind of business that did, that got billions of dollars worth. I think people would have, you know, a problem with that. Like I said, I'm not making a huge deal about it. I don't think it should be like you know against the law. Or anything. Yeah, but I, mean, I, I don't. I don't think. I kind of just don't like it. I don't think Musk was necessarily touting DeSantis. I think what he was doing was trying to tout Twitter. Yeah, because I mean, I I don't really believe that Musk is interested in an open dialogue. Because I think in his heart, Musk is a fascist like the rest of them. So I don't think he's interested in anything like that. I think he's interested in making money. And you know, I thought. I assume that he thinks there was some pathway there to make money. It would be my assumption. Well, I, I, you know something? You've got a guy like Musk who is, we have to admit, very bright, a very smart man. Yep. I mean, especially when it comes to things scientific. That doesn't mean that he isn't a savant and in a lot of other things, very stupid. 
And in this particular case, I think pretty damn stupid because I don't think you want to, when, you, when you're making uh, cars that you're trying to sell to everybody and now you're becoming this conservative, Mm -hmm. Am I, I, I would have bought a Tesla tomorrow if I had to buy a car, an electric car. But now that it, uh, you know, he's done this, I would never think of buying a Tesla. Never. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't. So I don't know about DeSantis' outlook. I mean, to me, it just doesn't seem that great because he's he, he just he's just like ultra to, you know, the extremes of that political realm and I, I don't know how he appeals to anyone outside of it and outside I mean if every single person in that realm voted for him that's not enough to win the presidential election I mean it you know it just makes him a wildly popular person within a party that lost I mean you know to me so yeah. I don't see where he expands out into you know changing the minds of people who tend to, you know, switch parties or independents or whatever you want to call them. But I mean, it's obvious that, you know, uh, uh, most people that are on this panel, for example, or whatever, would never even consider voting for him. So, but that's not what he's looking for. What he has to look for to get elected is, you know, some of those folks in the middle. And mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I just don't see how he appeals to them really. And I think, life. I think the problem with DeSantis is he's basically had a charisma bypass. Yeah, you know, I mean, he has no no qualities that even have he he's not doesn't even look like he's happy about anything. Yeah, and he just he also comes across to me from what I hear as another guy, another guy who doesn't really have any plans or policies or beliefs or yep. whatever. He just kind of says whatever's in the moment that he mm -hmm. thinks people will shake their head up and down. He's on. a reactionary, just like Trump. Yeah. Because he's mostly into stuff that isn't really mm -hmm. issues. Patrick's you know? got his hand up, and then Alan. Um, I I would say this. I think DeSantis has the more of an appeal for um, the the Republicans that have given up on Trump um, because he got. He doesn't have the same asshole qualities as Trump. Um, he may not have the charisma that Trump does to bullshit you, but he seems to have. I I know I I've, I've heard and I I know this is just a little microcosm where I live, but like on talk radio, we've had a number of women call in to the various shows. And they prefer DeSantis over Trump because he doesn't have the, the bristling quality that Trump has. He's a little bit more... Well, you know, he, I, I think the, kind of thing, the thing you're kind of trying to get at, and I think it's something we avoid when, we when we're talking about Trump, is basically he's just a, 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 a circus act. You know, basically, he's he's doing show business. He's he's doing a reality show. He's not he's not really a politician. I mean, I defy people to tell me what Trump's political opinions are. I mean, I've I've never seen any discernible opinions coming out of that man's mouth. It's all uh, putting people down and keep calling people names, and basically, he's doing all the stuff he learned doing The Apprentice. Basically, yeah. Uh, 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 yes, uh, Alan. So DeSantis said yesterday that if he's elected president, he will pardon all the people that are getting convicted for the January 6th thing. Oh, well, then I'm going to vote for him. Boy. Yeah, that's yeah. what I thought. What an <laughs> asshole. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's he's playing too much to the, the, to the wrong band. Okay. Yep. Oh. They're playing to the right band. Well, but that's because a small he, group. I mean, uh, they're all. It is. It is a small group. But the thing is, we're still a year out from all of this shit, and he needs to start now. If he's gonna get some of the Trump people that are done with Trump, because there's a lot of people that are upset with Trump that he didn't support the people that are 
getting uh, jailed and that, and they feel like they're getting the raw end. We put our lives, so to speak, on the line for you, and where are you in support of yeah, us? But, but still, that's, now we're all yeah. losers. And, but still, that's a handful of people. It, uh, it is, but you if know. you start small, and it, it, I mean, it's the same with Trump. Trump didn't have the whole fucking country right away. It took a while, and and I think DeSantis is trying to do that out of the well, same place. Well, well, Trump got to the front of the pack, mm-hmm. not by anything else, but by playing the media for all they he, they had. Oh, sure. You know, I mean, they gave him so, they gave him so much free publicity that he didn't even need to take ads out. You know, <laughs> and on the other hand, DeSantis doesn't know how to play that game. He had to go out and get two hundred million dollars the last couple of days to try and, you know, launch his campaign. Trump wouldn't need a penny. Mm-hmm. Okay, all all Trump has to do is make some kind of statement on Truth Social that's uh, completely ridiculous, and he's going to get all the publicity he needs. Yeah, but that's mostly because of Trump's history. He's always been like that, and he'll always get that. Yeah, but he you know, I do agree. But, he but didn't have to spend. This is just is just competing with that i mean he won the presidency i think without really expending very much money what's that he 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 managed to win the election back in 2016 without spending with stirred up so much shit over the years that the 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 media flocks to him I mean, every day they would be on the air with, guess what Trump said today? Guess exactly. what he said? He doesn't have to pay for it because yeah. the media are just but, like... But DeSantis, like doesn't, know how to, DeSantis yeah. doesn't know how to do that. And DeSantis is also living under a, another misapprehension. Uh, and that is that every because he's so big in Florida, all right, that everybody in the country knows who he is. No. They only know about who he is in Florida. Right. Right, you know, and so that's about have to it. Pay for it to find out who he is. Yeah, I more mean, and more people Trump in Florida is... are are calling him the Disney hater. Yeah, I mean, he's got Disney on his case. Yeah, well, that Disney yeah. thing is it probably could come back I to really bite him in the ass. Hurt him too. Yeah. So he's fighting two different things. Yeah, yeah, uh, and and believe me, I got to tell you, if if it's Mickey Mouse versus DeSantis, Mickey Mouse <laughs> is going to win. Yeah, okay. I was going to say Mickey wins all the time, and all those old people are going to hate DeSantis. And I'll tell you, the only guy who's shot. more obstinate than he is is Bob Iger. So yeah, Disney Disney, yeah. Came, Disney unveiled the eighth dwarf. It, it's a picture, oh, I saw it. Did you see it? Picture of DeSantis, <laughs> yeah. and it's called Wokey. Woke. Well, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll send it to you, Alex. Later. Yeah, yeah. Is that Disney who did that, or somebody? Uh, somebody online. that did. I'll Wokey. send it to you. It's a cute it's little a pamper on you. See it or something? Yeah, Wokey. I, I like that. I like that. That's a good name. That's a real good name. I, it was just sent to you in, in text. Yeah. I don't know anybody else's text. I think we're phone. losing Jeff. No, no, you're still awake. Still awake. You know, oh, I, you've still been still out here. in the sun, haven't you? Yeah, he got red as an owl. Yeah. No wonder you're drowsy. I get drowsy if I get too much sun and I come back with a sunburn. Yeah. But but most of the redness is right here. And so do you have rosacea? Yeah, I've been getting some of that. I have. Be careful, Jeff. Wait till you get to my age. I just got it last year, too. They have creams you can put on that once or twice a day. Yeah, I've I've tried, I've had I have rosacea, and they I went to a guy. He charged me I don't know a couple hundred bucks to see him, and then he sold me some of his cream in his office. Oh, really? All oh, he did was cream? all it did was irritate. <laughs> I gave me that for free. Well, yeah, so much it irritated the skin. It didn't <laughs> yeah, help it at all. You know, I look like a chalkboard. <laughs> Don't you know all these? No, 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 no. Yeah. The, cream, the cream that works the burn. best hmm? is is cream that's made with flagell, the the antibiotic. And it's very easy on most people's yeah. faces. Yeah. Well, anyway, this guy didn't give me anything like that, you know. Of course not. He gave you something with sandpaper. Well, also, what the, I have here, they, he said to me, he said, part of the problem I have here, if you can mm-hmm. see, I have some redness up there. He said, it's like dandruff. It's the same thing mm-hmm. as dandruff. And really, he said, you should probably, before it, use, uh, use a dandruff uh, shampoo right on your forehead and keep it there for about five minutes. And that yeah. will help it. 
anyway, I don't go back to this doctor anymore because he didn't help the problem at all. So, you know, and I hope that I don't get demonetized by YouTube because I talked about oh how to clear up rosacea. You know? Well, rosacea, you, you need to stay out of the sun or where after yeah. you put the rosacea medication on, you need to put on uh, yeah. sun, sunblock. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, anyway, listen, I'm playing the theme. I know because you can't hear it, but I'm telling you that I'm playing it. Hey, thank you all for being here. Did you miss me? Yeah, yeah. I missed you. I didn't worry. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, well, I missed you guys, too. Uh, I'll, tr I'll try and see if I can do a show. I'm going to do a show on Monday. I'm going to do the Monday show, and then maybe I'll try and see if I can do... Uh, I'll be here at least next Friday, but I'll see also if I can do uh, Wednesday and Thursday as well, so... Anyway, right. I want to thank Jeff. I want to thank uh, Josh. I want to thank Alan. I want to thank uh, our, our good friend uh, Kevin and Vernon Nunn. Thank you so much for being here. Always a pleasure. Patrick, whenever you call us, it's a joy, okay? And the same is true of you, Tony. Nice mm -hmm. seeing you, too. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go, folks. There they go. Let me see here. There we go. Okay, thank you. Uh, at least it's still working here. Doing all the flipping and stuff that I have to do. Anyway, we'll see you again on Monday uh, with the uh, with the uh, pop-up show. And then hopefully we'll be back to do a show on at least Wednesday of next week. But we'll let you know. Stay tuned on the Facebook page. And we'll say when we're doing shows and not doing shows and things like that. In the meantime, in between time, as always, we'll be back next time. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Good night, everybody. Bye-bye. Have a nice weekend.